What's up everybody, Jed Johnson here from DieselCrew.com. Of course, you know they call me Napalm. Today I wanna put up a video that's a little bit different from my regular content, but I wanna talk about bulking and cutting and how to get the most out of these processes. So, and especially I want to err on the side of maintaining strength, okay? So this is not really so much about bodybuilding, I am not a bodybuilder. However, I do like the idea of being naturally big and strong for my body weight, for my age, etc. So we're gonna be talking about the difference between eating for strength, eating for fat loss, and how to get the most out of these periods where we're doing this. So what is bulking? First off, bulking is where you're eating extra calories in order to put on more muscle and you're probably going to put on some fat with that, but you don't care because of the muscle that you're putting on. Cutting is then where you flip around and you eat less in order to take off the fat and hopefully retain as much muscle as you can. So. Here's the problem that I see, couple of them. First off, people go through what I call the bulking cutting cycle and the duration of time is, is way too short for each one. So they go through, maybe they decide, well, it's winter, I'm not gonna take my shirt off, I'm gonna bulk now. And then they unfortunately go crazy eating excess, excess calories. So it almost gives them the excuse to to eat like shit and you know when you eat like shit that is not maximizing the process for building muscle you still need to eat healthy but if you're trying to emphasize building more muscle obviously you want more calories so but i think people use it as an excuse to just eat whatever they want to um and that's not good uh, when the cycle is too short of bulking, I don't think it's optimal for putting on muscle. The, the normal person I've heard, uh, the normal man who is natural, can hope to gain between two and five pounds of muscle most of the time in one year. Does bulking help that? I, I, I don't know. Obviously, they like most people, you know, the people that I've worked with who bulk, they put on maybe 20 pounds. And, uh, you know, I've done the same thing myself. But there's no way that's 20 pounds of muscle. You can see that it's not muscle. There's, there's a lot of fat there. So they, they go crazy. They eat too bad, too shitty. And they get in bad habits. So you end up consuming way too many simple carbohydrates, especially in the form of starches. So I'm talking bread, pasta, pizza, things along those lines. In many ways, those are just empty calories that are just gonna, they're not gonna get burnt off. They're gonna get stored as fat. So in carbohydrate, I mean, how much does that really go towards putting muscle on? So just using the bulking period as a license to finally enjoy more desserts and go out and have pizza and wings all the time and you know engorge yourself on pasta it's not a good idea so if you're doing that it's you're doing the wrong thing the other thing is it can get you used to eating sugar and sugar another simple carbohydrate that really doesn't amount to much as far as the muscle building process so if you spend a few months where you're constantly eating sugar and you're gonna use that as an excuse to scarf down a bunch of candy bars and uh, eat cake and things like that, you're gonna get used to eating that sugar, you're gonna get kind of addicted to that sugar and it's gonna be hard to get off that in many cases. So what it comes down to, the food isn't quality food. You're not eating properly for, the, for this bulking process. So is the weight you're putting on what you want now if you're if you're if your training goal is putting putting on more body weight in order to get stronger 
That's a little bit different story because sometimes when you get heavier, your leverages improve and that results in better lifts. Your squat, your deadlift, your bench goes up and that's cool and all. But again, what happens when you take that body fat off? So in my opinion, I think if you're going to bulk, then you should do so for a much longer duration and give your body the chance to create good, solid, quality, lean tissue in the areas that you need it to either look good or perform better with the barbell. And, um, and do so in a way where you bulk and eat quality food so that the weight you put on is funneled more directly towards producing muscle and less towards producing fat. If you do that over time, you may not see the leverage increase from the bigger body weight and the, you know, uh, you know, your bigger just size overall to go into battle against the barbell, but it, you're going to have better quality muscle, which will result in strength and also um, sustained strength gains and maintenance. So, so the question I asked, does it make sense to bulk unhealthily, gain two to five pounds of muscle and maybe 20 pounds of fat, and then cut too fast, drop that fat, but also end up wasting away some of that muscle? Because when you decrease calories, there is a good chance you're going to end up stripping away some muscle. Especially if you do so very drastically and in a short amount of time. So if you bulk all winters, let's say for five months you're bulking, you put on 20 pounds and 15 is fat and five is muscle. Then you decide in a month you're going to go to the beach. And you, you go on this crash diet and you strip away all this fat. The chances are... You're, you're also going to reduce muscle mass because it's one of the first things to go. Your body doesn't need all that excess muscle mass, so it wants to get rid of it. It's programmed to do so. So I think it would be much wiser to elongate these periods, do so very uh, carefully, and try to optimize the, the muscle that's gained and the muscle that's maintained once you cut. All right, so I, now I want to talk to you about the process that I went through because, you know, this, this idea of, of a longer sustained bulking period, that's not my idea. This was something that I, I heard someone else talking about. It may have been Paul Carter. It may have been Matt Wenning. I'm not sure. I watch a lot of their videos. It may have been someone else, and unfortunately, I didn't, like, write it down somewhere or note it in my head. It's not my idea, but I took it and ran with it. So in January of 2023, I decided I wanted to shift my training, my body training to a more of a conjugate powerlifting style approach. And to get started with that, we attended a seminar to get a uh, refresher of how conjugate works with Anthony Oliveira. And we started following the Wenning Power Building Program. This, this was a very good primer for conjugate training. And I had also been listening to a tremendous amount of uh, Matt Wenning and Louis Simmons and Dave Tate videos uh, throughout the course of 2022. So we followed the Wenning Power Building Program for 12 weeks. In April, we modified it because we wanted to try to take a more strict approach with uh, conjugate style training. So what we did is I can't do a four day powerlifting split because of my grip training. So I train body on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I train grip on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it's very difficult for me to try to double up on two workouts and continue to progress because I don't recover very well if I'm training that often. So I can do six days a week as long as I alternate body and grip every other day. And then I take Sundays off. In the case that I'm traveling or I go watch a wrestling match or something on Saturday that's out of town, then sometimes I have to put my 
last grip training day on Sunday. But for the most part, um, Sundays are off for me. So the approach that we went to was a three-day split where one week would be upper on Monday, then lower on Wednesday, upper on Friday. And then the following week, we would have lower on Monday, upper on Wednesday, and lower on Friday. We also did it this way to be able to incorporate speed work for overhead press. So instead of just working on bench, squat, and deadlift, we were working on bench, squat, deadlift, and press. So we had to juggle things around quite a bit, and I'm not gonna get into those details in this video. However, I do have it outlined at thegripauthority.com if you were to uh, join there. One dollar for the first month. So uh, we did, we started that split in April of 2024. And also during that period from the beginning of 2024, all, uh, wait, I'm sorry, from the beginning of 2023 until the about April of 2024, I went on a bulk because again, I had already heard about this longer periods of bulking and cutting in order to um, develop more quality muscle. So um, at the time, I was also eating bad, not disciplined, due to my current living situation. So, and also due to some habits and stress that I was having. So I'm kind of guilty of exactly what I said earlier. I made bulking my excuse to accept the fact that I was eating bad. So I started out to, uh, 2023 um, around 2.30, 2.35. By April of 2024, I was 263. So that's about 35 pounds, let's say. I also knew that I was not going to promote the national grip competition in 2024 and that it was most likely going to be in California. And I would be going against people that were much heavier than me. So again, I trained to get as strong as I could using conjugate powerlifting and I bolt in order to put on as much weight as I could without going over the 120 kilo class, which equals 264. And as it turns out, I was right on the line uh, the day of the competition. So you put all this together, it's a basically a 16 month bulk, 100% natural, no supplements, but really not optimized eating. But I feel like my strength improved tremendously. So to give you an idea, prior to all this, my highest deadlift ever, was 555 double overhand with straps. I did that in actually 2021. And my most recent deadlift PR was about a month ago, 580 pounds uh, double overhand with straps. I have an ex explanation of why I use straps in my deadlift on my YouTube channel. You can search for it and find it. So I think what this shows is that the training I was doing from 2023 to April of 2024, as well as the eating, was very productive in bringing up my strength. I also feel that I was putting on good quality mass, but under a lot of fat. And in April 24, when I came back from nationals, I was not happy with how I looked. Um, you know, jeans were fitting tighter, extra fat everywhere, no aesthetic detail, no veins anywhere. And that's really not what I wanted. So I cracked down on my diet instantly and I marked this one thing down. So you can see over here, I have a list of, these are body weights that I recorded when I weighed in. So when I came back from nationals, I weighed in at 263.45 pounds. Again, not happy with that, not happy with how I looked. So I began the process of cutting. So as I record this, it's the middle of October, 2024. So what that's four to 10, that's six months where I've been cutting, okay? But this was not an aggressive cut. This was done over time. And I feel that it was, I was able to sustain the muscle that I've built over 
the last year and a half, you know, from 2023 to 2020, April 2024, very well. So I want to talk to you about some of the changes I made. I, I put my foot down about pizza. I was eating pizza just about every single week. Um, sometimes once during the week and once on the weekend. It just had to do with the living situation that I was in. And I'm not the kind of guy to throw away food. So when we would buy a large pizza, I would end up eating the majority of that pizza over the course of two or three days. We would do that during the week. Then we would do that again on the weekend. That wasn't working for me, brother. So I put my foot down about that and that stopped happening. I also reduced... The amount of pasta that I was eating so spaghetti and you know things along those lines got rid of a lot of the noodles and also the bread uh, much fewer sandwiches grilled cheese sandwiches um, much less toast and eggs things along those lines I also started intermittent fasting around this time where I would not eat in the morning and I would shoot for 12 o'clock, which ends up uh, noon, which ends up being about 14 to 16 hours of intermittent fasting, depending on how late I ate uh, my last snack. Because usually dinner would be around seven, but by nine I would be hungry again, so I would have to eat something else. So I would get three hours at night and then 12 hours. So that right there would be about 15 hours. And then generally I eat around noon, sometimes later, depending on the day, sometimes earlier if I'm extremely hungry, um, but you know, 14, 15, 16 hours. The reason that I uh, went for intermittent fasting is because I don't have the time in my day to do cardio like I used to. The reason why is because I would do cardio three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning. And now I use that time for stretching and mobility. So I, I didn't have available time based on my living situation uh, to do cardio. So instead I went the intermittent fasting approach. And really when I did this in 2021, when I trimmed down the last time, I didn't feel that intermittent fasting did, some, did much for me, but I think it was, it, was, it was good for me this time around. I think the most important thing was the cracking down on the eating habits, but I think intermittent fasting you know, complemented the whole process very well. Um, and again, zero, almost zero cardio. Uh, I've, I've done cardio the last few weeks because I've had extra time, but it took me from, you can see here, 263 in April and then 239.25 most recently, which is, uh, I believe, Thursday of last week. Looking back, I wish I would have put the dates, but you can see, I think it was about a month I took off about 10 pounds. I got down to 254, 253. There were a couple times where my weight fluctuated and it probably had something to do with what I ate the night before. Maybe it wasn't as good. Maybe I, maybe I did have pizza or something like that. And uh, you know, I bumped back up to 256, but I got right back down to 253, 52, 51, 49. And from here, it's been pretty much, uh, the scale's been going down ever since. So. I think around this period was uh, was August, and then I'm down to 239 now. So this is weighing in about every 10 to 14 days. Now, my, my current goal is at 45 and being a natural lifter is to have the best aesthetics of my life going, going forward. So optimally, I get to a body weight of about 105 kilos, 231 pounds, and I can compete in that lighter weight class. I don't want to suck weight prior to a, a grip contest, so I, it would be I, the goal would be sustainable weight. I have a contest in about two weekends. I'm not sure I'm going to get to 231 by that contest, but I'm really not that worried about it. The problem with sucking weight is we only have a two-hour weigh-in and grip in most cases, so it's tough to kind of re recover everything um, and get feeling. 100% at a grip contest when you've when you've done that aggressive sucking of weight the week prior to a contest. But I also want to increase strength at nearly my lightest body weight ever. The the lightest body weight I can remember being at in the last 10 years was 2013 or 2014. I got down to 
223 pounds and that was very light for me and uh, that's the only point where I ever saw any strength decreases but uh, you know you can see at 239 right now my my best deadlift again my deadlift went from 555 to 580 and I weighed about 242 right around in this area is where that deadlift was so you know I'm I'm doing pretty well as far as my body weight to strength ratio. So, covered a lot of information. I gave you my experience from running this experiment, if you will, of this long duration bulk and longer, long duration cut. Uh, I think it's going to be more beneficial for you. So, if you're going to commit to bulking, I would look at taking a whole year to do it and try to do it in a clean way. So you're gonna increase your calories, but don't go crazy on all those empty calories that are not gonna mean anything or do anything for you uh, in your program. Cause you're gonna end up looking very different and you're not going, well, I know I was not happy with how I looked. So there's tons of videos on my channel now where I'm walking around and my gut is out to here because yeah, I've put on a little extra fat. Um, I probably, my stomach was probably full of, uh, of water because I drink a lot of water and I don't suck my gut in. So, you know, it's just kind of, I, I don't like the way I look in a lot of those videos, even though the numbers that I'm putting up on the barbell look good. Um, so if you're gonna bulk, do it right, increase your calories. Don't use it as an excuse for extent for extended bad nutrition. I mean, you don't want to give yourself high blood pressure because of the way you're eating, uh, and you don't want to put up put up put on excess fat because it's just going to be tougher to get down to that lean body weight that you want to be anyway. So, uh, and then when you cut, start early. Give yourself time. Um, look at these things in at least six to twelve month blocks, not like two or three months. Not not just a couple months in the winter, you're gonna go off your diet and, and blow up. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, the goal is to be my aesthetic best. Not in the best shape, because in order to be in the best shape, I'd, I'd have to be able to get out there and, you know, test myself physically in like a cardio situation. So, like running is out of the question. I have really bad ankles. Jumping rope, every time I do it, I either strain something in the bottom of my foot or my Achilles tendon. You know, I should address those issues, but I haven't done it. Um, my cardio is really the speed work that we do in training. And I'm not saying that's optimal. The point of this is to look at your diet, look at your dietary approach, stretch these periods out. I think you're going to have better results overall. And, you know, you'll be happier with, with how you look. I know I'm pretty happy. You got pretty good ab development right now. And I'm looking to take off, you know, probably at least another five pounds. And, uh, you know, it's all natural. I will say that I did just order creatine recently. Plan on taking it every single day for basically the rest of my life. And not just because of the benefits for lifting, but also the brain benefits. Uh, I recently just attended a strength conference where the speaker that talked about supplements highlighted the effects of creatine for the brain. And, you know, I have horrible memory, brain fog all the time, and I'm looking to improve that. So I actually take um, creatine every single day, sometimes twice. And uh, I, I don't, I've only been doing it for less than a week, so I don't know what it's going to do strength-wise. Can't really talk to that. But I don't even care necessarily about that. I'm looking for the brain effects. So I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please give the video one of these. That helps the algorithm. It helps uh, show that my video and my, uh, my videos in my community, there's, there's good engagement. It helps me grow. If you have any questions, you'd like further detail, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. That's another thing that helps my channel. Um, be sure to subscribe. And uh, check out the description box for ways that you can support the channel, uh, products that I sell, my store, and other things along these lines. Thanks again for watching the video, everybody. All the best in your training.
Take care.